Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaos. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc. that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we have returned to Horror on the Orient Express with our investigator. Uh, Currently, they are in Paris, but before we get to this evening's events in Paris, I would like the cast to introduce themselves. So to my right. Hello, I'm Mike, and I'm playing James Robert Fraser. Very good. And to his right. Hi, I'm Rena, and I'm playing Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy. And at the end of the table. Hi, I'm Giles, and I'm playing Simon Griffith. Uh, to Mr. Griffiths, right. Hi, I'm Miranda, and I'm playing Maggie Bellinger. And last but most certainly not least. I'm Martin, and I'm playing Richard Courtney. Wonderful. Well, hopefully to everyone's enjoyment, we will begin to play with an investigator improvement session. And so I'm going to start again to my right with uh, Mr. Frazier, and I'm going to ask what skills he needs to improve or would like to attempt to improve for that matter. I have uh, a couple of skills to improve. Um, The first one is my spot hidden, which I've successfully used a couple of times now. Uh, Firstly, to spot uh, a rather suspicious looking Turkish gentleman while we were at the uh, um, British Museum, uh, the, uh, the dinner. Yes, at the dinner at the uh, Challenger Lecture Series. So yeah, go ahead and give it a roll, and then uh, let me know what you get. I'm looking to fail a roll here. You are 70 70. or over. So, and I have rolled... uh, I've rolled 80. (laughs) Well, you're well then. You may add four points to your spot hidden, sir. Wonderful, thank you. Your eyes improve even as your age. If you become a bit more wily then... Indeed. It's the new spectacles. That's what it is. It's a, it's a new prescription. Um, and my next skill is uh, quite staggeringly my uh, my German, which uh, I managed to put to some good use while we were rooting about uh, in a second-hand bookshop. Mm. I have, I have a, a smattering of German, so I'm just looking to fa- fail a roll of 12 here. <laughs> which I failed to do. <laughs> I rolled a zero two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, fair enough. Play them as they lie. Uh, no raise to your German, unfortunately. But enjoy your spot hidden. And then uh, we'll, if those are the only two, then what we will end with is a luck roll for you. A luck roll? Well, I've spent a little bit of luck. So I'm sitting on 51 luck just at the moment. Here's hoping. <sighs> no. I rolled a 17. Even though you failed, it's a D10 plus 5, so that's 12. Lovely. Lady Elizabeth, if you would grace us with your list of skills. <laughs> well, all the ones that I got uh, a pass on were ones that were already really high, so I'm not super optimistic. <laughs> but the first one is library use, yep. um, which I've used several times, I believe. Um, so let's see. I need to roll above a 75. I rolled a 63, so no. <laughs> oh, well, that looks like the library used has to wait until maybe next time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one is a cult, uh, which I've also used several times. I believe I used it in the museum, and I also used it uh, out in Northbrook. Uh, so on the Maplebrook estate. So we'll see if I can roll above a 50. And I can. 76. <laughs> All right, so that is three more points of occult for you. Yay. I was going to say, you've, you've probably made a few occult rolls at this point. <laughs> yes, but it's one of my favorite skills. Um, okay, and the next one was psychology, uh, which I've also used a couple times. I believe I used it on the professor, and I think I also used it on my brother, Raymond, when, when we were visiting him. 
Um, so if I can roll above a 30, that shouldn't be too hard. 65. Yes, you first notice that Raymond seemed a little bit um, concerned. Uh, oh, so that is eight points for your psychology. Ooh. Yes, Getting up there. Very nice. Okay, spot hidden is a 50. I use this one also a lot of times uh, at, uh, at Maple Brook and also throughout this adventure. <laughs> feel for 97. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Only skip. time I've ever been glad to roll a 97. <laughs> Yeah, skip that roll right out of the way. Uh, so that is three more points to your spot hidden. Okay. And my last two, uh, first up is language French, uh, which I used uh, in the library in the last episode, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's only a 40, so I have a good chance of succeeding in that one. <laughs> 98. Okay. I'm going to retire these dice before we actually play the session tonight, Mike. It's probably a good idea. Um, so take uh, seven points of French. Okay. Seems then, uh, Remy, Remy, your assistant uh, is paying off. He's mm-hmm. showing you uh, some some uh, some of the more uh, important nuances of French, maybe. Picking up some some new vocabulary, and my last mm-hmm. one is Latin, which I used on uh, the book I believe that we found in uh, or the, that uh, Courtney found at Maple Brook. Yes. Um, so out of fifty. 44, so no, no improvement there. I'm sure that uh, Professor Courtney is uh, in weeping now that your Latin has not gone up yet. He's desperate for you to know more Latin. <laughs> All right, we'll get to we'll get to the professor. Trust me. Um, so let's talk about luck. Okay, my luck is 57, mm-hmm. and I rolled a 52, so it does right. not go up too much, but. Yeah. You get 11 more points. Oh. Thanks to Pulp Cthulhu. It's that plus five every time that's just wondrous for you. Yeah, I've got 68 luck now. Mm Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right, so uh, Simon, if you'd uh, care to go through. Looking at mine, I have three ticks, plus I have been trying to study Greek. So Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you wish to uh, take care of that one, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll, um, we'll deal with Greek last that sounds fun. So the first one was listen when I was overhearing everybody in the hall and the first couple episodes with Dr. Smith. Mm-hmm. And I rolled a hundred. So take five points of listen. That goes up to a 45. So the only time you'd want to roll a hundred ever. So next one is a spot hidden. I believe this was when I was going around uh, Professor Courtney's house or the one with the uh, university rooms. Mm, yes. That's a 54 over 40. So that one. Yeah, that one goes up by three. Okay, and the last one is the stealth when I broke into Professor Courtney's. That will not go up because I rolled an ought nine. Yeah, yeah, it still stays where it's at. Okay, so as far as Greek goes, uh, I would like you to make a hard interval. Make it or fail it? Uh, I would like you to make it. 30. That is a hard roll because my instant 80. It is. So, you may open Greek at 7%. All right. Excellent. Okay. And then luck, if you would. All right. My luck is currently at 55, and I rolled another 100. Man, you got to be <laughs> careful tonight. <laughs> That's 25 luck. Already. Well, Miss Bellinger, shall we? Of course. Uh, so, I have four boxes ticked. Nice. Uh, the first of which is fighting brawl for oh, yeah. fighting a creature on a ferry. You were so excellent in that as well. Oh, thank you. Well, I rolled a 41 over 25, so. Sounds like a raise to me. For that. Let's see, Miss Billinger's brawl goes up by seven. Awesome. All right. So then my next one is library use and uh, I believe the first time I passed library use was to find the news article about Professor Smith 59 over 50 okay that is six more points and then uh, spot hidden I don't 
I know I used it early on. I don't, I feel like I've spot hidden a couple times. I don't remember specifically uh, what uh, Maggie's eagle eyes have <laughs> darted around <laughs> to see entirely. That's okay. I believe that, they, that there's probably been a spot hidden roll. Uh, well, I rolled a 16 under 25, so. So clearly that's staying put. Yes, <laughs> at 25. <laughs> Right. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, drawing um, for drawing a skinless uh, man to show yes. all my friends. I think we really have to see this role improve. Uh, it, no, unfortunately, no. It's oh, a 14 man. under 40. Well, I won't break the rules in this case, but man, we got to get that drawing yeah. up because clearly your drawings have been very, very productive. Yes. All right. So uh, luck then. All right. Luck. Is it going to be 60 against 63? Okay, so, so that's... I passed. You pass. You still get luck? Yeah. You get 12 points of it. Oh, that's plenty. I feel like we should be spending more luck, guys. Maybe. Or maybe it's just to lure you into a false sense of security to Ooh, spend luck. that might be it, too. Mm. Either way. Sneaky, sneaky keeper. All right, so, Professor... Right, so Richard has um, only two skill checks to make. He's got library use and spot hidden. And right. I don't remember exactly when that was, but I can tell you I made them with black marker that I've not had out of the pen pot for a few weeks. So uh, <laughs> yes. it was a little while ago. Go right ahead. So that one is a... Sorry, let me just check that one. That's 64 on the library use, which unfortunately is a pass. Stands pat then. And... A rather good 49 on the spot hidden, which is a, a pass. <laughs> okay. And then luck, sir. He has 83 luck, so as expected, it's a, a pass. Okay. Well, that's going to be 14 more luck, so you'll just be about maxed bard. Yeah, you're right. That's uh, 97 now. Looks like it's time to spend luck. <laughs> yes. That is that then, and we are going to open the show and lift the curtain tonight on, well, we need to fall back to Paris, where the investigators are still working through that first day. Now, when we left, Simon and Mr. Fraser had gone to a few bookstores and they were pawing around looking for um, whatever maybe interesting artifacts in, in bygone places that they could find. We know that Lady Elizabeth and the Professor and Maggie had stewed away inside the National Library there, and they were hip deep in as many books as they could get uh, with uh, having acquired some assistance from some of the local researchers. Uh, so I'd like to start back at that library if we could, and I'd like to get an idea of after that first roll, after that first four hours of study at the library, uh, and given that the professor hasn't seemed to come up with anything yet, uh, and given that Lady Elizabeth uh, has uh, maybe creeped onto something that her and Remy are, are looking over, are you going to stick around for the next roll, or are you going to come back the next day? Well... I'm certainly going to stay since we're on to something and I'm really interested in it. I'm going to stay until they kick me out, probably. Right. So specifically, you, Lady Elizabeth, uh, had a fantastic role. Uh, or actually, you allowed Remy to have a fantastic role. I should say <laughs> that more. I said, no, no, he can use his. And he'd rolled an aught seven. And so he returns a little while later as you're looking into a few other things. He returns with piece of folded parchment, a couple pieces of it. And he says, I, I do apologize, lady, but uh, this is all I could find here in the library for anything summoning related. He turns his back as to put his back towards the, the desks where the, the main administrative folks are. It is quite um, provocative. And he kind of hands the paper over to you. Interesting description. So I'll open it, take a look. Uh, so when you look at this, there's quite a bit of writing at the top, on the top half of it, above the fold, and it's written in a strange collection of letters. It doesn't even seem like a, a language per se. There are words here that you can pick out 
in in English, but then there are other words that just don't make any sense. Uh, and there are very strange pronunciation markings on them. And then at the bottom of the page, or at that bottom half, there is a feminine figure that's been drawn. She's in this almost crouched pose on her knees, and she has this air around her of energy. It, it just flies off the page at you. And it isn't one that you're familiar with in a lot of media. You're not familiar with this type of kind of raw, powerful, feminine energy. But the figure strikes you as a powerful one because she has two very pronounced antlers, almost racks of horns that come off of the top of her head. And there are these strange symbols that adorn the upper left part and then lower right part of the page. But it's it's fascinating. Does the sight of the, the a woman with antlers, does that strike a chord? Does it mean anything to me? Does it remind me of anything I've read before? Oh, not, not specifically. You've seen powerful feminine imagery before, uh, like back at Maple Brook, but this, this woman has what would appear to be long rows of tattoos down her arm, some type of markings on her arm, and her fingers almost come to claw tips. Uh, she's extraordinarily fierce. Remy, do you know anything about this this image? Any kind of folklore or, or myth or, or anything you can think of? He, uh, His eyes are like down at the ground and he's he looks like he's blushing. No, Adam, I, I do apologize. I uh, I only returned with uh, what what you asked for, and this is the only thing that I have been able to locate in the library that is close to. Um, it seems to be some sort of. I can make a few of the words out. He kind of points to the text as to, but and using his hand almost kind of obscures the the image at the bottom, which is fairly would be considered for the day fairly pornographic as it, <laughs> it's exposed bare breasts and. Well, it's very Parisian. <laughs> Let's put it that way, uh, in that regard. And he points to a couple of the words, and he says, uh, there is a word here in, in this line. Uh, she's, it seems to speak to delivering something um, uh, unto someone, as if, a, as if a, it reminds me of a prayer, like I um, might have heard in church as a, as a child, although I, I don't go to church anymore. You and me both. Hmm. Prayer, you say. Fascinating. Well, I mean, you, you asked for anything potentially on summoning, and uh, I did find in one of the uh, old e- ecclesiastical uh, hymnals, and he presents a very small book to you. It's very thin, and it almost as if many of the pages have been taken out of it, and then he kind of shows you in the book where the page was. This was uh, placed in here, so um, I, I do not know if if it was part of this book or not, but it is, um, it's very, very striking. He smiles. She smiles back at him. Yes, it rather is quite. Uh, do you mind, uh, Remy, with, with the library mind, if I, uh, made a copy of this, took a picture or sketched it or, or something? Oh, I, I, he looks over his shoulder back at the assistant who'd first, or the, the head of the assistants who'd first checked you in and then kind of looks back at you and says, well, I'm fairly certain the, um, the staff here would be perfectly happy if you um, never spoke of it again. Aha. Uh-huh. I see what you mean. Hmm. Uh, we never spoke of this. We spoke of what? Good lad. Now, um, is there anything else I can help you uh, research is there anything else you're looking for? If this is all you could find on my subject, uh, my colleagues had some things in mind. I don't know how they're getting on. Well, um, shall I shall I go assist them? Uh, yes, I'll just uh, have a look at this book that doesn't exist. Hmm. And she winks Better at him. He steps away. Richard, you and Maggie are poring over another one of these books looking for any sort of connective tissue when it comes to this Fenelik person. And your research assistant, a, a young younger lad, is doing his best to ferret out these 
uh, these books that don't seem to have any sort of logical system. Uh, who's ever, who ever took over this library recently has just done a, well, they've done a, a less than a professional job of properly sorting these books, and it's been very frustrating these past few hours. Yeah, Richard is pretty annoyed with all this. I mean, he's uh, in a place where he should be in his element, really, but he's not. He's not getting anywhere at all. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's probably the system that's uh, that's the frustration. If it was organised properly, then uh, then he wouldn't have any problems at all. But uh, that's just not the case. Um, I think Richard's going to... Um, I mean, he wants to keep going. He doesn't really want to be beaten by a book. That's not his, uh, not his style, not by any stretch. Um, but... He'll turn to Maggie and say, um, Oh, these... These French people, they've got a terrible way of organising these things. I just can't find anything. And and the help isn't very good either. I really think we should stay and find something. I mean, after all, we're supposed to be going after this uh, this simulacrum, but uh, without any idea where. Do you think we should stay or, or maybe come back another day? Oh, uh, no, I think I think you're quite right. Uh, we need to uh, keep on the trail, and um, we should stay and, and research a little bit further. I wonder if there's anyone else who can help us. Um... On cue, the gentleman who is helping Lady Elizabeth steps over, and you see him kind of tap the younger lad who's been delivering books to you on his shoulder, and he simply gives him just a, a wave, and the lad turns around. Excuse me? I seem to have um, sated your companion's desire for uh, knowledge that she was speaking of, so she has asked me to assist you. Excellent. We um, we seem to be having some problems trying to find anything on a, uh, a, a Comte Fenelic, I, I believe it is. Uh, I could write it down if that helps. No, no. Do you know anything about this man? I believe he was around at the time of the French Revolution. He was a, a noble of sorts. Hmm. He seemed to tap his chin for a moment. Well, there may be something over here. He turns just on a heel and begins walking at a relatively fast pace, almost purposeful. So Richard will look, out, uh, look, look over at Maggie and go, uh, Hmm, this, uh, this looks a little more promising than the last one. Yes, he did seem to know exactly where he was going. Yes, well, Remy made a library use roll and rolled a zero one. Ooh. <laughs> it's very fortunate for him. And you. I hope the younger worker doesn't take it too personally. To that end, Maggie, it seems that the younger worker is stepping outside to have a smoke. So okay. probably He's not. probably fine then. <laughs> probably not. He's 12. He's having a few cigarettes. As you do. <laughs> About, say, five minutes later. Remy returns with a single book. It's relatively thick, but you can see it was probably bound several uh, several hundred years ago. It's got the same sort of age to it as some of the other books you have. And he puts it down on the desk and opens it up and begins flipping pages very carefully. Very deft hand uh, on this gentleman. And he stops and he starts running a line back and forth. You said he was a, a nobleman, yes? Uh, I I believe so. You see here a, a number of, uh, just from the text here, uh, a number of court histories referred to, um, there's this uh, scandal, he says. Uh, oh. There was a scandal in the, in the Queen's Court uh, on the eve of the revolution. It says here, I'm a man of uh, minor nobility was apparently involved in an indiscretion with the Queen. He looks at you. <laughs> My God. Uh, after a palace uproar, uh, the fellow was uh, executed without trial. Uh, the man was a German count named Fenelik. Yes, yes, that's, that That sounds like the man. So you're looking for a man who's executed for um, having his um, way with the queen? Well, I mean, we're interested in his, um, what, what he did, um, uh, where he lived, and, uh, and possibly his descendants as well. All right, then. You can keep swipping through the pages. I don't see any uh, marking here, any discussion of his descendants Um, Hmm. do you know um, do you have a better time period maybe Um, give give me one moment and uh, Richard will consult the uh, piece of paper that uh, Beddoes gave him (laughs) (laughs) give me a second we pull out a piece of paper (laughs) give me a moment to pull out a piece of paper (laughs) (laughs) no I, I 
I'm afraid I don't. It's just before the French Revolution, I believe. I don't know. Do you have a record of births and deaths of that era? Um, well, Marriages? We have some records of it, yes. I, it, Likely, if this count was... Um, if he was executed, then someone would have talked about it. The court was full of, um, well, you know, politics. Mm-hmm. Let me consult a few of the uh, journals from the day. Perhaps I'll find you something. He turns around. Oh, if you would be so kind, that would be um, that would be fantastic. He's literally gone before you get <laughs> you get get to get around to thanking him. Well, we do seem to have hit upon someone who's a little more confident than the last one. Uh, so he returns a little while later, probably another five or so minutes, and has a very small book with him. He says, "I have a, a copy here of um, a diary." He sits down next to you, Richard. Probably a little closer than you're used to in English culture. Like, he mashes himself kind of between you and Maggie. (laughs) And he he opens this diary, which, of course, is in French. Uh, So this is a a diary. Uh, This is, uh, he pats the book. Uh, Mademoiselle de Brienne. Uh, And she mentions this uh, this Comte in uh, 1789, in, in June. I see. You see here? Uh, Yes, Um, yes. He, I don't know how much French you read, or how well. Um, none. Hmm. Maggie, any any French? I mean, I would say Maggie reads twenty six percent of French. (laughs) That's awesome. Why don't you make me a French roll? (laughs) Okay. I think all Richard can get is the numbers. (laughs) Ooh, uh, forty six against twenty six. Let me sum up for you. Uh, This Comte was a a son uh, among us, she says, uh, shedding his light and making all rejoice in his pleasures. He he looks at you, Richard, with a kind of a strange grin. His feasts are uh, said to be the most lavish and uh, lascivious yet in a city. eh? And that's saying something for Paris. Uh, It was then uh, that it came, it became apparent that much evil was afoot and the queen became angered, angered. The king's men did braid the house, and much was destroyed, and this comte, it seems, was arrested. Mm. And so there you have it. Um, where was this house? What, uh, what what was its name? I would have to inspect further. If you would be so kind. Um, Richard, uh, perhaps uh, this event that the diary speaks of was when the statue was dismembered. Yes, but where would it have gone? Well, perhaps... The the bibliotheque, uh, the the one at the arsenal, uh, it's not far from the Bastille. I think you should take this. He puts the diary in your hands with the page, like in, in, with his finger still on the page. Take this and head there. Perhaps uh, you could search among the archives at the Bastille. That's going to give you a, a better uh, focus on uh, what you talked about: families, births, deaths, uh, property records. I see. Well, th- thank you. Um, do I need to check this out at all, or? Mm, of course, we would need it back. Indeed. Um, and how how might I go about uh, arranging that? Well, luckily for you, you have a wonderful assistant who can walk you through the process. Oh, <laughs> thank you. He walks over, uh, taking the book with him. Uh, walks over with the two of you and goes to the front desk and begins having a. Very direct and quick conversation in French with the head librarian that's there. And after a bit of back and forth, the librarian stamps the book and then Remy turns around and hands it to you. Now, thank you, Professor. Do me this one favor, Professor. Return the book within a week. The records from this era are very difficult to get a hold of, and the librarian, he looks over his shoulder, is not keen on letting them out of the library for long. You understand? But but of course, thank thank you. No, it's um, absolutely fine. I don't think I've ever returned book late before. I should not hope so. He turns to you, Maggie. Is there anything I can do for you? Um, n- no, I, I, I think that you've been um, plenty of help. Wonderful. Well, Paris awaits, yes? It yes. Does. Uh, mm. Shall we then, Richard? I think we should. Um, is it worth checking in on um, 
Lady Elizabeth, or uh, I suppose we could nip out and maybe grab a coffee or something. There's a, there's a cafe just right up the street. It'll be wonderful. Ah, um, which direction? Oh, he, just uh, out the door there. He points to the main doors and then take a left. You, uh, you cannot miss it. Ah. Uh, Remy, could you possibly let our companion know that um, we've uh, left the library? It would be my pleasure. I'm sure she is uh, fine to handle herself. She seems very capable, yes. He yeah. turns around. Have a uh, wonderful day. Why, thank you. And thank, thank you again for your help. Mm. Oh, uh, Richard, he's already gone. <laughs> yes, he's very quick. Okay, so um, there are two gentlemen wandering Paris, staring into old bookshelves. So, Mr. Fraser and uh, Simon, what have the two of you post-bookstore gotten yourselves into? Mr. Griffith, uh... What do you, uh, what do you recommend? Well, perhaps we should finish our coffees here. <clears throat> it's very good, I must say. And then uh, we could go to a few other stores. We could head to the uh, the antiques district. I mean, one of the key things we got to do here is figure out how to open this this book of Lady E's, right? I suppose yes. If it does contain some sort of. Uh... <clears throat> methodology of uh, well, what is it it was supposed to do? Is it have some sort of protection in it or something? I mean, I, I don't see why we can't just. I mean, if it's that important and we we haven't the keys, why we can't just break the thing open? You know how rich people are about their stuff. Uh, well, which is more important to keep the uh, the valuable antique intact or to get the knowledge from within it that's not really for me to say but I rather suspect that her ladyship is is quite keen to get the knowledge from it. Oh I'm sure she is I'm sure also she'll be happy to see what we've already acquired this this incredible French tome and that German book of folklore. Hmm absolutely absolutely what do you think to all this Mr Griffith? I mean Really? What? What? This, this, this whole escapade? Well, I think that we have a job to do. You're working for Lady E, and I'm making sure the professor doesn't do anything stupid. Lady E. <laughs> I never thought of that one. <laughs> They're going to be stupid, you know that. Well, I, I certainly know that the professor is somewhat uh, impetuous. Well, Lady Elizabeth herself is rather impetuous, but... Uh, the professor doesn't seem to uh, be quite as uh, safety conscious as he might be. Uh, did, did I tell you? Did you know about that? Um, uh, what is it? A sextant device that he has. Uh, that, uh, Lady Elizabeth was examining it, and it, it latched itself onto her face. And he seemed quite blasé about the whole affair, but she was in, uh, in some distress. I won't be putting that thing on. That's for sure. No, no, no. Me neither. <laughs> And speaking of impetuous, just look at Miss Maggie. Ah, indeed. Uh, yes, she is. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, full of uh, vim and vigor. I'd rather like her, though. I have to say, she's just a wee breath of fresh air. Oh, she's fine. Her and the professor, though, together. Oh, recipe for disaster, if you ask me. I mean, at least Lady E, as you said, she can be impetuous, but she's only impetuous with the things that interest her. Uh, well, aye, this is true, but uh, some of the things that interest her, uh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not entirely sure that, uh, that they should be things mm, sensible, cautious people should be meddling with, but that's just my opinion, such as it's worth. So, you've been to Paris before as well as myself. Where do you think we should go next? Well, it depends on what we're looking for, really. I mean, uh, I suppose they're, they're looking out for the uh, information uh, about the... The leads on this, uh, is it the, the Count? Uh, what, what was his name again? Fen Fenulik? Uh, I'm a little distracted because uh, that fellow that I met on the train, his uh, his situation, his his plight, has it's, it's been preying on my mind somewhat. Yeah, what situation is that, sir? Oh, did I not tell you? His, um, well, it seems that his, his fiancée... Um, was uh, the sister of, uh, of a, a great soprano who, uh, I believe, I think there's a, the, the poster over there um, uh, is appearing actually in Carmen at the Opera House, even even now. 
Um, her sister was uh, met an untimely end, and uh, the police don't really seem to be uh, paying it in any attention. They seem to have sort of given up on it, and uh, he's, he's at his wit's end. That's fine. I rather wish there was something I could do to help him, to be, to be honest with you. Well, sir, you don't ask for much, so if you'd like my help, uh, we can attend this performance, and I'd be more than happy to uh, help you with any matters of investigation. Oh, uh, well, that's very kind of you. Uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, where to begin, but uh, I would, <laughs> between you and I, I would rather like to go and see the production myself. It's, uh, I am... Uh, I'm, I'm something of an aficionado, uh, and, and uh, the uh, the soprano in question is just she has a very very fine voice, very fine voice. Uh, uh, Caterina Cavallero is her name. I'm afraid I don't know much of it, but I'm sure that if I go and I sit quietly, it'll all be fine. Oh, I can I can assure you, Carmen is just um, oh, it's 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 a wonderful opera, wonderful, very very spirited, very uh, visceral. Uh, as far as, uh, Yes, indeed, indeed. Is there a performance tonight, sir? Do you wish to go tonight? I believe so. Um, well, uh, yes, if, uh, if I can get tickets for it. I wouldn't be surprised if it sold out, but uh, we could always go and ask at the box office. Well, how about we finish our coffees here, sir? Head over there to check out the tickets and uh, look for any interesting places on the way. And my other thought, again, is we need to... F- I love going through these antique stores and looking for stuff, but are there? We need to find if there are any shops that deal with this occult stuff. These what, books. What exactly are we looking for? That's that. That's the thing that eludes me. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss to know precisely what it is we're trying to find here. Well, I understood it was implied that Lady E has already tried to have the book opened, right? She has, indeed, yes. She's had a locksmith at it who, who's, who's singularly failed in all his attempts so far. So unless we have a locksmith here in Paris who is more familiar with dealing with, uh, how would you say, particular locks, or if um, well, maybe this is something to do with all that mystical bullshit. <laughs> well, that's a rather stronger... Uh... Stronger phrase than I would have used, but uh, indeed, uh, yes, this uh, this heathen mumbo jumbo. Um, I, I, it, it does strike me as odd, though, that the locks themselves they're they're, they're quite unusual. They're, they're not like anything I've seen before, and I, I rather suspect it uh, it might take something of a of a very very skilled craftsman to be able to to figure a way to open them. I, I wouldn't know where to start looking for that, to be honest, and he. Um, in this city, uh, I'd hardly know where to start in, in in London, which I know well. Well, my granny told me stories that sometimes people could put up these things called wards, or, you know, to prevent entry and exit by foul spirits. Um, and I'm sure you've heard of something like this. Sometimes it's as simple as a horseshoe over your door, right? Oh, yes, well, you know, there's this... There's... There's superstition and folklore all, all all over the world. I mean, we in Scotland we have a we have a deal of it. Let me tell you. And and I mean, it don't hurt none, you know, to believe in it and follow it. And there may even be some truth to some of it, because Lord knows I heard some pretty frightening things coming at night from the no man's land. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm 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 not a superstitious man, as as you probably know, but uh, the nights were long and dark. And you know what they say in the Bible, there are things that man was not meant to know between God and earth. So I believe in in some spirits just because that's how I was raised. I don't believe in all this mumbo jumbo and seances and stuff like that. But these locks, the symbols of these locks are strange. Yes, perhaps there is some significance to that. Maybe you've, maybe you've hit upon something there, Mr. Griffith. Uh, yes, sir. As, as the bard has it, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was shooting for, but, you know, I'm not educated. But that's what I'm saying. Let's take these symbols that I drew out, go to an, uh, one of these occult stores. Sometimes they sell books, too, and ask some questions. And, on, of course, we can also get our tickets. 
oh, that's, that's, that's not a bad idea at all. And also, uh, a thought has occurred to me that we could perhaps, uh, we could perhaps get in touch with uh, with that uh, chap, um, uh, Monsieur Rostand, the, uh, the restaurateur, and uh, oh, I'm sure we could all uh, have a have a pleasant meal in his restaurant. That'd be great. Maybe he likes the opera too. Perhaps he does, indeed. Well, shall we finish our uh, coffee and croissant and uh, and uh, see what awaits us? Sally forth. So the two of you are going to stop by the box office? I think that's the idea, yeah. There are tickets available for Carmen, which is what's playing. You can even pick up a playbill, which I assume that uh, Mr. Fraser does, because that's kind of yes. sort of the thing that he would want. Yeah, very much so, yes. So you get a fantastic looking playbill Um, and there is a brief summation of it and there are pictures of the uh, leads uh, and the the critical roles in it so you do see what uh, what all the fuss was about so this is uh, this This is is this would be her sister this is a sister uh, uh, Katerina yes and so if if family um, genes or anything uh, she's quite the attractive lady he lost is it just you and I then, Mr. Griffith, do you think? Or uh, should we see if the others wish to join us? We could, but they might all be tuckered out after a hard day of book reading. Indeed, indeed, yes. Well, we shall we shall take these. We shall keep the, keep this safe and sound. And uh, what say we plod the streets a little longer and see, see, see what we can come up with? Sounds good to me now, sir. Oh, you don't, you don't have to call me, sir. I mean, please, please. Uh, James, uh, James. I feel like we... we we could be on first name terms if uh, if that if that's if that's all right with you. That's fine. Okay, Jim. So now uh, James is fine. I heard you. Now, in regards to uh, the other three, my only concern is for this investigation. Will they be a help or a hindrance? Because you know, when they're alone, we have to watch out for them too. I feel a little guilty running off to the opera and, and leading, leaving Lady Elizabeth to her own devices. Uh, you know, uh, I, I really should uh, check in with her to make sure that, uh, that that's all acceptable to her. Okay, we can do that. My personal opinion is the professor needs his sleep or he gets cranky. Wouldn't do to have him cranky, that's for sure. All right, so uh, you want to just pick up five tickets? And that way, if they don't come, we have space to stretch out. Let's do that. Yes, what a jolly good... Oh, perhaps we could get a box. What about that? Um, that would be perfect, and we could invite our uh, French chef friend. Marvellous, yes. So, um, yeah, if, if it's possible at the, at the box office to uh, to arrange for a box for us, then you know, that will mean as, as many or as few of us can go. Yeah. If... if um... Mr. Fraser, or perhaps Simon are willing to part with the uh, financial arrangements needed for a box, then they are willing to supply you with one. Um, I would say um, take, say, the cost of four opera tickets and then and uh, and then divide them by five. So we don't really need to get into the nitty gritty of mm-hmm. it, but mm-hmm. remember, Franks are about a one to five ratio of memory serves correctly. Well, we have a suitcase full of money, so... We do. <laughs> we do. So we'll assume... Then that uh, you uh, you've afforded yourself a nice spacious box to enjoy Carmen later on, and uh, now you just have to uh, acquire the rest of your uh, compatriots. Well, I think we'll, we'll probably uh, make our way back to the hotel just to see if they they're there. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. We'll keep our eyes open for anything along the way uh, that looks occult or. Mm-hmm. Bookstore-ish or antique. St- I mean, I've still got the this sheet of paper with the symbols on it burning a hole in my pocket. Sure, indeed, sure. absolutely. What what sort of time of day have we got just now? For you, it's probably about midday, give or take. Uh, well, why don't we go back to the hotel? We can uh, see if the others are there, and then we can have a spot of luncheon. And then this afternoon, we can uh, head head forth and uh, see if see what we can make of these symbols you have in your pocket. <laughs> Sounds good. By the way, uh, are you carrying anything in case any trouble happens? Not uh, on my person, but uh, um, I have made pre- made provisions. How about you be prepared this evening, then? Are we going to be in our monkey suits, or are we going to be just dressed casual? Oh, I would say would be uh, evening dress would be appropriate for the opera, especially if we're in a box. 
Yes, Mr. Frazier, you can't you can't possibly fathom the idea of not being dressed up to go to the opera. Yeah, just jeans and a t-shirt, you know. <laughs> where are we going to put our stuff then? I mean, are we investigating tonight after the opera? Perhaps we could sp- see if we can uh, speak to uh, Mademoiselle Cavallero or um, if if Monsieur Le Verge is, is there. Uh. Okay, so you guys all head back to the hotel and then I'm going to pick up with uh, Maggie and Richard getting coffee because I feel like the cafe uh, air around Paris is perfect for the two of them. Maggie, Richard, you go and you find a cafe. It's splendid wrought iron furniture, the hustle and bustle of Paris around you, but not consuming you. And uh, the still crisp air near uh, the Seine, which flows quietly and patiently nearby. It is a picture. It is a postcard if you could draw it. This is uh, quite nice, Richard, especially after, um, well, I feel the air was a little bit stuffy with all of those old books, so it's it's quite nice to be out and about. Yes, um, I quite agree. It uh, can be overbearing in there, and uh, all the si- all the, um, the silence and, uh, well, yes, the books, as you say. What time is it, by the way? Uh, so for the two of you, it's probably just after midday. It's probably maybe just one, half one, something like that. Uh, Remy sped up your time from Mm -hmm. um, his research role, so you didn't have to take the the whole four hours to find what he needed. Do you fancy a spot of lunch? Of course, yes. I'm I'm actually feeling quite famished. Yes, me too. That whole business on the ferry was, um, yes, quite took it out of me. Oh, uh, yes. It's strange. It seems like that was so long ago, but it was... It really hasn't been very long at all. No, no, only yesterday, I think. And Richard sort of looks over for a, a waiter. Yeah, one comes around. He does that kind of catches his eye thing. And, uh, Monsieur, Monsieur, um, can we uh, see a, a menu, please? <laughs> oh, but of course, he <laughs> spins and turns and you both have one in hand. Thank you. Uh, did you say you spoke a little French? Um, uh, yes, I, I actually had a French, um, tutor, um, when I, uh, back home. Ah. You learn a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid I didn't. Um, I came from the country and all we spoke was English and, uh, nothing very exciting or cultured, I'm afraid, but, uh, it was, yes, uh, my mother always said I should, uh, should travel and see the world more and, well, I, I, I guess I am now. Yeah, indeed. Well, perhaps I can help you with the uh, menu. And I'll, uh, like, lean in close to kind of look at at the menu and point and see if I can decipher anything that's on it. (laughs) Yeah, there's quite a a wide selection of different types of coffees here. And as far as um, their strengths, there isn't, I mean, there isn't isn't coffee as we would know it today. But they do list things like cappuccinos and, and, uh, and the elk. And then there's croissants and uh, other bits of um, there's baguettes you can get and then uh, probably some salad fare well um i do feel like since we are in france perhaps we should uh, try some uh croissant uh, yes yes if you uh, if you recommend it um yes why not so yeah uh, maggie would order uh um maybe a cappuccino and a croissant yeah, the waiter comes back over and um are you going to work through your French with him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll for me. Bonjour. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh <laughs> May you're the 78. Ooh. Um so the waiter stands and, and listens as best. You can see that he's he's trying to work through what you're asking for. And he goes to the menu and walks you through some things. He's very gentle about it. Oh, good. But you can tell that whatever you said is totally botched what you meant to say. <laughs> um, but um, he commends you for trying. And that is that that's very important. And then says that he'll be back with your coffees right away. Uh, that, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. A few minutes later, you get a kind of smattering of uh, breads 
you have a couple of croissants to try and there's a few pieces of baguettes here and then you get quite a quite a familiar smell arrives as well in the form of the coffee that they sit in front of you and mag you get all sorts of uh, interested because this smells like the stuff they brewed that the parisian folks brewed at your aunt edith's house that's what i was just thinking oh i think i've i've had something um similar to this before oh uh, richard this smells just like the coffee at my aunt edith's house it does it it reminds me of when we um uh, when when your aunt came in <laughs> do, you, do you remember <laughs> yes she just kept coming back to check on us yes i think she was rather interested in me <laughs> and uh yes <laughs> well uh who could blame her richard uh, no, i we do know that i uh this will be quite energizing then Oh, yes. Um, yes. I uh, <laughs> certainly will put a spring in our step, I think. <laughs> Indeed. Well, this is all rather fantastic, isn't it? I don't think I've seen so many types of bread before. I'm used to a, a, a loaf, and, uh, and and that's about it, really. But uh, who'd have thought it? It's quite nice. Um, we can try them all, I think. Yes. Probably a good f- few minutes later, Richard, you realise you've... you've- We've quite gone through a lot of this coffee already. It's it's really easy to drink. Hmm. Oh yes, this is uh, this is a a great brew. Um, you can't quite get anything like this in London. Can we see the river from where we are? The River Seine is not too far. Hmm. I mean, less than maybe a hundred yards. Uh, so Richard will say to uh, Maggie, "It's a splendid view." Um. I could possibly sit here all day and watch people go by and listen to the sound of the river and see all the activity around it, the, the little artists and the painters. And wist- Richard just sort of looks wistfully over. Yes, I I do enjoy watching the hustle and bustle myself as well, but no, I'm sure that as soon as this coffee kicks in, we won't want to be... Uh, sitting around. Maybe perhaps we could go for a, a walk together along the Seine. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. Yes. Yes, walk some of it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two of you walk, find a wonderful little path to walk along the Seine with, and Maggie, just out of the corner of your vision, you see that another one of those flyers on a nearby table seems to be either it's a advertisement or it's a newspaper, but they're talking about the catacombs under Paris. And you just see the the words in English that says catacomb and it trips your memory that they're here. Oh, Richard, would you look at this? I, I've read about this a little bit in our uh, travel guide. Oh, do, do explain. Um, well, uh, they're, they're, my French is a, a, a little bit rusty, but uh, there are these catacomb tunnels un- underneath the uh, city and I was... I was hoping that we would have time to do some uh, sightseeing while we were here, and I think it would be awfully uh, interesting of a topic for me to uh, write about in my tra- travel journal. Perhaps would you, maybe you could accompany me? Yes, that that would be delightful. What sort of tunnels are they? Did somebody dig them for transport, or sounds like there might be some history there? Yes, I well, I believe they're more for uh, burial. Oh, sort of like a tomb. Yeah, if I if I remember correctly, they're um, lined with uh, bones. Oh, that's rather macabre. I, um, I, it is a, a dark topic, but I feel like it might be a very interesting to write about, and also I could possibly get some good pictures while we're down there. Yes, I was going to suggest that might be something you could take some more photographs of. Uh, yes, I, I'm... There are lots of uh, bright travel ju- journals out there, but I, I want mine to be the most exciting, and I want to write about things that others haven't quite written about yet. Well, I, I certainly I don't think I've heard of these catacombs. I think, um, uh, yes, including them in a travel journal would be um, qu- quite something different. I mean, everyone's read about the Seine and uh, the Louvre, and uh, if, I wouldn't mind going there, the, uh, the, the Eiffel Tower. Uh, but yes, this, this would be something different. Well, it's it's settled then. We will uh, we will find some time to go there. Perhaps. Well, we have the rest of the uh, day, unless well, 
um, we do have to uh, head to, um, was it the Bastille that we were going to? Well, that's where you've been directed to by Remy at some point go. But I mean, the, the catacombs tour you can't imagine takes too terribly long. Yes, perhaps we could squeeze it in. It might be better to do it in the afternoon than at night. <laughs> I could imagine it getting quite creepy. <laughs> uh, yes, and I think in the past couple of days I have uh, maybe had my uh, fill of um, nighttime creepiness. Yes, yes. Yes, I think the ferry was rather enough for one day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's settled then. Let's let's go to the cat. I mean, Richard really doesn't care about the Bastille at this point. Let's let's go to the cat. <laughs> He's shirked his duties again and it's off to the catacombs with, with Maggie. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so I'm going to pull the spotlight and I'm going to go right over to Lady Elizabeth, uh, who is uh, probably still somewhat enjoying the library. Remy does return to you, having uh, assisted the professor. Uh, and he again asks you, um, he does fill you in that they're going to go to a cafe and perhaps get a, some lunch and that he's directed them to the Bastille for uh, further archival information. He asks, uh, again, to make sure that you have everything you need, and if there's anything else, um, you've paid for his services, and he's happy to help in any way that he can. If you wouldn't mind, Remy, um, anything you can find on female figures in the occult, it would be fairly helpful. This is quite new to me. You have, a, uh, per, you have uh, quite an interest, huh? Yes, well, it's a, a bit of an esoteric interest, I suppose, but uh, lots of lots of reading. Mm. You always find such fascinating things. All right. Well, I shall avail myself of the library again and do my best to find uh, something for you. Yes? Given the, uh, the nature of the search, the library may close before I finish. Uh, it may close to guests, he gestures in your direction. Of course, it does not close to me, so... Uh, I can continue to go all night. I'm sure you can. If uh, it takes that long, then I suppose I can come back tomorrow. Well, yes, or if if you'd like, I could, um, if you would be willing. I, if I don't know where you're staying here in Paris, but I, I could uh, return my findings to you when I'm finished. Yes, uh, you can find me at the Bristol Hotel. Oh, wonderful. Have you ever stayed at the Bristol before? No, this is my first time. It looks quite delightful. There's a um, there's a chef I know that works there. His name is uh, Martin. Uh, perhaps um, perhaps I could um, let him know. He makes a wide selection of fine dishes, and for someone as uh, someone as uh, important as yourself, I'm sure he would love to dine uh, to make sure that you have everything you need. That would be wonderful. I'm a big uh, connoisseur of food, let's say so. The, the better dishes, the more happy I will be. Then uh, I will uh, avail myself of the library again and return to the Bristol with my finding. Very well, thank you. You've been quite a wonderful assistant today, Remy. He bows and uh, he kind of doffs an invisible hat because he doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> well, I shall see you at the Bristol when you've completed your research and I suppose in the meantime I shall go find my compatriots and... Uh, have a cup of coffee. Assuming mm. they're still there and haven't gone wandering off around Paris. Coffee? I I, I, I apologize. I, I assumed you would drink tea, be drinking tea. Ah, uh, I like both. And uh, when in Paris, etc., etc. Oh, well, if I may be so bold, uh, my lady, be very careful with the when in Paris uh, phrase. <laughs> she just sort of raises an eyebrow slightly. Well, it's just a... Uh, Paris is a wonderful place, but visitors for the first time sometimes are disarmed by how charming some of Paris might be with how uh, less than charming some other places are. So, you have a certain sense we are a city that is going through a lot of political turmoil, and not everyone's future is secure as others. And so, for some here, even some of my uh, university friends, it is very difficult for them to make do day to day. I see. Please, be careful in the city. I will be careful. Thank you for the caution. I have uh, an associate to look after me. Thank you. I'm sure that they are wonderful at it. Now, I will continue with my research. He gives you a very slight bow. Thank you, Remy. Once he's gone, I'm going to slip that uh, 
paper that does not exist <laughs> into into my bag uh, and head out to find Maggie and Richard, if they're still there. When you arrive at the cafe down the way, uh, you realize that they are not there. Although uh, there is an empty table that's there, and it does seem to have some strange assortments of food at it, but looks like they're cleaning it up now. You do, however, around about the same time, as they're making their way back to the Bristol, you do see across the street um, seem seemingly two inseparable people, uh, that being uh, Mr. Fraser and uh, Simon. They seem to be uh, walking back down from maybe the opera. I'll go out to intercept them. Ah, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Griffith. Oh, uh, your, your ladyship, <laughs> I do apologize, I didn't see you there. Yes, I was uh, looking for Miss Bellinger and the professor, but they seem to have uh, absconded. Oh, I, uh, I, I um, don't believe I've seen them. Uh, I can't help you, I'm afraid, your ladyship. Uh... Young people in Paris, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure they're fine. They wouldn't do anything crazy now on their own. Of course not. Um, by the way, Lady E, uh, we managed to pick up a couple tomes for you. Ooh. That's, tomes is what you British call books, right? Oh, particular types of books. Um, but her eyes li- light up. She's like, gimme. Like that kind of look. I, I, I suppose we'll have a look at them back at the hotel. But uh, what did you find? I have this French book. It just called to me. I hand it to her. It looks like it's very important. And then uh, Mr. Fraser here, uh, Jimbo found this uh, German book. Something about German folklore, but he's, it looks very interesting. Do you, you speak German? Unfortunately not, uh, but uh, I'm sure I can pick some up along the way or find someone who can translate it for me. Sprichst du Deutsch ein bisschen. <laughs> that sounds like you speak German, Mr. Griffith. Only a little. We had to be able to say a few uh, words to the, to the captives. Ah, yes. Uh, and I'll put the books in, in my bag. Uh, thank you for your diligence. I shall have some fun poring over these later. I, I, I hope there's something uh, of use uh, contained in them, your, your ladyship. Fraser, don't forget to tell her about the, uh, the opera. Uh, no, no. Yes, that, that was the very, very next thing on my mind. Uh, we, we've managed to procure uh, a box for the tonight's production of Carmen, your ladyship, at the Opera House. Ah, I see. Uh, you know how one feels about the opera. Well, that, that was precisely what I was going to ask you, your ladyship. Uh, would uh, would you mind very much if uh, if I attended? Uh, it's, it's something I, I'm, I'm very keen to see if I possibly can. Of course I don't mind. It's your own time, and... Uh... I know you enjoy such things. I mean, of course, if there's anything that you, you need me to do, I, I will, of course, attend to it. Oh, no, no, no. Can't think of anything. If it, if the performance is tonight. Um, is it just uh, just you going, Fraser? Well, um, Simon here has, has, has kindly agreed to join me. Um, and, uh, we, well, we were going to ask uh, yourself, obviously, and, and also... Uh, Miss Bellinger and Mr. Courtney, if, uh, if they would like to come along as well. Ah, a group outing, I see. Well, we, we, we didn't like to assume uh, that uh, they wouldn't uh, wish to see it, uh, so we, that, that's why we uh, uh, arranged a box. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Fraser. I'll come along, and since you've procured a box, I'll bring this lovely French tome with me. Will it offend you greatly if I sit in, in the box and read my book instead of listening to the caterwauling? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it caterwauling. Uh, the, the soprano is is uh, is very well known and uh, and a particular favourite of mine. Uh, I have to say. Uh, uh, but, I'm um, sorry, Fraser. I didn't mean to offend you. You know how I feel oh, no. about opera singers. No, 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 no. No offence taken, your ladyship. No offence taken, of course. But yes, if you if if you'll be joining us, that that would be wonderful. I, I must admit, I, I do have a something of an ulterior motive as well in in that. Uh, do you recall the gentleman uh, that I spoke to on the on the train? Um, he uh, was telling me of uh, of his fiance who who had uh, very sadly uh, recently recently died was murdered in fact. Oh really? Mm, well. She look she looks like she's actually interested now. The soprano tonight, uh, Caterina Cavallero, 
is the sister of the, of the lady who who's now deceased. Fascinating. And uh, you wish to do some poking around? Well, I mean, if I can get her autograph, I, I, I would be... Well, I have the programme, as you can see here. And he kind of takes out the uh, the playbill and shows it. It's, it's yeah, quite a quite a beautiful affair as well. And, and uh, if, if I can possibly get her, her to sign it and uh, be able to exchange a few words with her, that, that, that would... Uh, well, that would really make my trip, <laughs> I must admit. Um, but but also, uh, the gentleman that I spoke to, well, he was uh, well, he was very distraught about the whole matter. And, and, and I thought, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something that I can do to help. I, I, I don't know if it's, it is possible or not. Uh, the, the police don't seem to be taking much of an interest in it. And, uh, well, I just thought, seeing as I'm here and, and uh, they're there and the opera's on and, you know, kind of looks rather sort of sheepish and a bit a bit tongue-tied at his, <laughs> uh, his blatant fanboy attitude. Yeah, so she, she uh, just sort of smiles indulgently and says, well, if that's the case, then I'll sh- I will definitely attend the opera with you this evening. Perhaps uh, my presence can grease a few wheels, so to speak, and uh, you can meet your uh, soprano and we can... Maybe ask a few questions, or rather you can do that while I provide the proper social graces, and uh, we'll turn it into an adventure. Or, or, or at, at the very least, uh, offer my, my services such as they are uh, to, to perhaps assist her in, in, in finding out exactly what it was that, uh, that happened to, to her sister. Well, and last but not least, uh, Jim here was thinking that maybe we could go have dinner over at the new French chef we met on the boat. You'll get some whitefish or whatever that stuff was. Ah, yes. Now this is a part of the plan I heartily approve of. So dinner, opera, investigation, adventure? Yes. Uh, Although, Mr. Griffith, you will have to uh, dress to the nines, I believe the expression is. Can I bring a bag with me? She winces. Fraser just <laughs> looks at him out the corner of his eye. Well, uh, the, these monkey suits are kind of tight-fitting. If I'm going to be doing an investigation, I need to have equipment. She just sort of glances at Fraser like, help explain, please. Well, I, do, I don't see any, any reason why you, why you wouldn't be able to bring a, bring a bag with you, or, um, if it's something uh, appropriate. Oh, well, maybe we hit. Ha- Lady, what bag Lady is appropriate e. with a tuxedo, exactly? <laughs> Lady E, perhaps we could place items in your bag? Do you bring a bag? I think we can probably dispense with, with, with the, the subterfuge. Um, Simon, I, I think what, what my friend here is, is referring to is uh, protection uh, of the... Of, uh, uh, in, in the hand form of a handgun. Yes, I rather thought that's what you might mean. Well. Oh, more than it, that, but. It would be part of an adventure, I suppose. I've never smuggled protection anywhere. In case we should meet any uh, unsavory types, uh, such as we uh, encountered uh, at uh, Professor's. Well, such as Professor Smith encountered at his house, and, and we, we saw at the, uh, at, the, at the dinner that night. Don't forget about the boat. And indeed the boat, yes. Well, I don't think that kind of protection will help with uh, creatures of the sort we saw on the boat, but uh, against the more human and savoury types, yes, it should do just fine. I'd rather feel that perhaps there are well, there are forces at, at work, so to speak, um, that uh, may be keeping an eye on us uh, as we travel on our journey. Oh, you said you didn't believe in those forces, sir. Uh, I'm speaking of uh, forces of the mundane kind, uh, people. No, of course. So let us let's all get ready, and uh, we'll wait for the. Do we wait for the professor and Maggie? Do we give them time? Well, we can give them until dinner, I suppose. But uh, not much point in waiting beyond that if they're off on their own little adventures. Who knows what they're up to? Uh, have you had luncheon, your ladyship? I have not. I was just. Uh... Coming out to do so when I saw the pair of you walking down the street and thought I should intercept. But perhaps we could lunch together, all three of us. So that's where we were headed as well. So. 
an excellent plan. So, lunch, and then looking at some tomes, and then dinner and the opera. Do we need to make reservations, Mr. Fazer? I will attend to that. And I'll get ready for dressing up, because as per Jim, it ain't Catawall and it's common. And on that note, I think I'm going to draw us to a close. So uh, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Horror on the Orient Express. And we will see you next episode. <laughs>